Commodities like gold, cocoa, and oil have seen their prices lifted by higher inflation. And while it's been good for certain investors, the reality is the typical investment portfolio totally misses exposure to commodities, which is a major asset class. So how can you plug in the missing hole? Well, on today's ETF battles, we're going to feature a triple header between core, broadly diversified commodity ETFs. Stick around for an epic face-off. This is ETF Battles. I'm Rondo Leggy, and it's great to see you again. Hit the subscribe button and like button if you've been enjoying our original series content. Also, check out the description section below. We've got links to our program sponsor direction, along with links to our program judges. So get in touch. So what is ETF Battles? Well, it's the one place for critical thinking when it comes to ETF investing. And nobody quite analyzes and judges ETFs versus each other with such meticulous fever. Fervor, not fever. Well, actually, fever and fervor. And if you need help deciding between two or more ETFs, send us your ticker symbols in the comment section below or on our X feed at ETF Guide. We could do double, triple, and quadruple headers. Now, also, I want to mention that um, check out our Season 5 playlist of ETF battles. Just make sure that uh, none of the requests that you're making are battles that we've already recently done. So commodities have been one of the, what we might say, Rodney Dangerfield of asset classes. It's the one area that can't get any respect. But with inflation pushing higher, commodity prices have been lifted. That's also lifted ETFs linked to commodities higher. And I think the view of getting more respect, that's been changing. And today's ETF battle is actually a triple header between core broadly diversified commodity ETFs from BlackRock, Invesco, and USCF Investments. So which ETF is the best choice for core commodities? Well, helping us to sort through it is Tony Dong, an independent ETF analyst, and Mike Akins with ETF Action. Judges, welcome back. Great to see you. Great to be here, Ron. Pleasure being here, Ron. So we'll blaze through our four battle categories, cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and then mystery. And mystery, of course, is where our judges can pick a single factor or multiple factors that they think are uh, pertinent to today's battle and uh, make their arguments. They can opt for split decisions or wild cards. It's up to them. I've got the scorekeeping chores, and at the end of the show, we'll declare an overall winner. Keep in mind, none of the battle outcomes that we ever do on this program are predetermined or known in advance by myself or our judges. So the first category is cost. Mike, please get us started. Well, so from a cost basis, starting with DBC is the most expensive at 0.87%, GSG 0.75%, and SDCY the cheapest at 064 um, But looking through to underlying liquidity and bid-ask spread, what you pay to get in and out of these products, uh, DBC and GSG are both pretty cheap at about five basis points, whereas SDCI, which is a little smaller, a little newer, a little less liquid at 40 basis points, kind of brings everything in the equal playing field um, when you think of total cost of ownership. Um, so if you're trading these um, on a more frequent basis, DBC, GSG are going to be way better than SDCI. If you're holding it for a long time period, that cheaper expense ratio will pay itself off over time periods. Um, so I'm just going to give it a, a straight up uh, a toss up. I don't think there's a, a big difference between the three that we're looking at today um, other than, you know, making that decision. Are you trading or are you holding this as a, um, core position to commodities in your portfolio. Strong start. Thank you very much, Mike. Tony, you're up next. How do you see it when it comes to cost? Mike hit all the bases. Uh, SDCI is on the face of it, the cheapest one with the lowest expense ratio. But as Mike mentioned, the bid ask spread on this is quite large at around 0.42 right now. So it, it, like I said, if you're going to be using this for a tactical holding, like you're going to be using it just to quickly hedge where you move in and out of a commodity position, it's going to cost you a pretty penny. Whereas GSG, like most iShares funds, right, very, very low bid ask spread, 0.04. It's not going to cost you a lot. But as you hold it over a long time, that's going to compound. Uh, personally, for me, I look at commodities as a tactical tool. You use them to position yourselves to benefit from, say, geopolitical risk, to benefit from uh, the energy prices directly. So in this case, I'm going to be trading in and out of these. I want something liquid. I don't want to get gouged <laughs> entering or exiting a position. So for me, that goes to GSG. That takes us next to exposure strategy. Tony, you're still up. Break it down for us. 
So uh, the first thing you need to understand as an investor is when you buy one of these funds, you're not actually holding the underlying commodity as you would a gold ETF. A gold ETF will store gold bullion in vaults, but these you can't really store a barrel Brent crude or some bushels of wheat. Instead, you're getting exposure through futures contracts, which are being offset by collateral, which is usually treasuries. So DBC uh, holds futures on 14 of the most heavily in traded agricultural metal, uh, precious metal, base metal. SDCI does something similar. So the exposure is more or less the same. The difference is the methodology in which they select these contracts and rebalance them. DBC uh, actually tracks an index, the DBIQ Optimum Yield Diversified Commodity Index, quite a mouthful, whereas SDCI is actively managed. And GSG tracks the uh, S&P GSCI Total Return Index. Uh, the, the main advantage uh, that I like here, and I'm going to go with SDCI, is that I really want active management in the commodity space. Given that you're paying about the same price, the nature of how these future contracts can behave with a phenomenon called contango, when these ETFs have to roll their futures over to the next month, sometimes they have to buy high and that can erode your gains over time. And that's much easier to manage. Contango is much easier to deal with when you're actively doing it. You're not beholden to a benchmark that's going to force you to incur that negative roll yield day after day. Now, of course, the indexes used by GSG and DBC have some methodologies in here to uh, mitigate that. But because these markets are so unpredictable, I want that active management. I want the manager for these ETFs to be able to intervene and take control when these future markets are really being unpredictable as we saw during COVID. So for me, it's SDCI. Mike, you're up next. How do you see it when it comes to exposure strategy? Yeah, I think Tony touched on the on the key points here, which is the optimization versus non-optimization of your role, right? So when you're looking at the futures contracts, it's what you own inside of all three of these strategies. Um, as your futures approach expiration, you have to roll to the next month out or next three months out or six month outs, depending on your methodology or in an active place, what you see as the most attractive. Um, I do like DVC and SDCI for that reason. Um, they have uh, DVCI uses an optimized roll yield. It's been around DBC. I'm sorry. It's been around for a long time. Uh, it has done extremely well relative to um, base front in, front month indexes like uh, GSG tracks. Um, so it's its methodology works quite well in that optimization of the roll yield. Um, but it's all about contango and backwardation. Backwardation when you're rolling is good for the good for you. You're buying cheaper than you're selling on your contract. Uh, contango it means you're going to have a negative roll yield, um, and which all basically means you're buying higher than you're selling to keep your exposure to the to the commodity contract. Um, between DBC and SCCI, I do think a little active is can go a long ways. I think uh, so far they've been very, very similar. We'll talk about that in a second on performance, um, but I do like that active management. So I will um, concur with Tony and give the overall winner to SDCI, which is optimizing yields. It has a structured way of doing that, but it has that active component, which I think can be beneficial in this space. Boy, our judges are bringing it today. Uh, I have a taste for some commodities for lunch today. I think I'm going to have eggs and uh, uh, what else? What other uh, come on? I'm throwing some coffee with some cocoa. Yeah. We used uh, to have anyway, an ETF for that from Directions that covered breakfast commodities. It's been delisted, but that did yes, exist at one yes, point. Yes, I, re <laughs> I, I remember that. That takes us next to performance. And uh, this is where it gets interesting. So, Mike, break it down for us. How do these three ETFs look when it comes to performance? Yeah, so, you know, long term uh, uh, is a little tougher with a long term just from a standpoint of SDC. It doesn't have quite as much history as the other two, um, but it has a fair amount, right? It's got um, uh, enough to take a look at, at where you're at um, on the one, three, and five year comparing these side by side. Um, you know, SDCI, as I alluded to, and DBC um, track each other pretty well over the one, three, and five year. There's a little bit more variability on GSG, um, but just kind of on the five year, SDCI is the top performer at a little over, uh, just under 11% annualized, DBC is at 9.32, and GSG is um, at 6.21, so a full 4% um, annualized return less than 4.5% um, than uh, SDCI. So I think it's pretty clear when you start talking about that optimization of um, managing against contango and backwardation, um, it can it can play, pay dividends. Um, so I'm going to give the win to SDCI here, um, and I... Um, yeah, that's that's where I'm gonna 
I'm going to stick with it. Yeah. And, and it should be noted too, although five years obviously is not a super long time frame, we think about the five years in the context of this particular time frame. I mean, we did have a global pandemic. So a lot of crazy stuff has happened the past five years. So this uh, performance analysis our judges are doing takes that into account. Thank you very much, Mike. Tony, you're up next. How do you see it when it comes to performance? So Mike's covered the annualized returns very well, but what I wanted to look at was the specific returns of each ETF during notable market events. So remember in 2020, we had that catastrophe where oil prices went negative, right? Wasn't very good. Well, at the end of the year, each of these commodity ETFs behave very differently. Uh, DBC fell the most. Uh, USCF didn't fall quite as much. I think it lost about 10.61% at the end of 2020, but... GSG absolutely got slaughtered. GSG fell by 23.94 at the end of 2020. So you had that deep, deep drawdown that requires disproportionately more to dig yourself out of. Flip side is by 2022, we were seeing very high inflation. And this is an environment where commodity ETFs and the future contracts they hold show great sensitivity because we know they're direct inputs into how CPI is calculated. In this case, you want the most sensitivity to inflation because that's the whole point of these ETFs. They protect you from that. But once again, we saw that USCF did the best in 2022, right? It had 32.86% return that year, which provided you with a lot of inflation protection, even if it was just a small part of your portfolio. GSG did the second best, surprisingly, and DBC trailed. It did pretty well at 19.34, but not that good. So given what we've seen that... You know, USCF didn't have the lowest of the lows, but it had the highest of the highs during these conditions where we can really observe a direct cause effect relationship between the macroeconomic condition and the performance of these ETFs. I'm going to give it to USCF. The active management has paid off. And, you know, I think this is one of those instances where I can make that apples to apples comparison and say that in this case, it really does do better than the index. Well, that takes us next to our mystery battle category. This is where our judges could pick a single factor or multiple factors to make their arguments. So, Tony, give it to us. What is your mystery battle category and which of these uh, two ETFs or actually I should say three ETFs, which of them uh, takes it away for you? My mystery battle, battle category is risk management and diversification potential. And I like to throw my wild card there. You mentioned earlier, it's a directions fund called Calm. The cool thing about Calm is that it uses a long, flat strategy, which means that it can go long on a commodity. So it can, you know, it, it, you can take a long position, but you can also go flat, which means you hold cash. Commodities have trends. And there's a lot of hedge funds out there that use a trend following strategy and Calm basically uses the basic elements of that. If a commodity is in a downtrend, it doesn't have to stay invested and eat all the losses like an index would. It can stay in cash. And right now today, when cash is earning 5% risk-free, that's a very good positive carry. Now, when back tested in June 2018, Calm loses on total returns to all of these. It comes in at 8.37 and something like DBC came in at 10.79. But, but... The standard deviation or the volatility you would have experienced with this fund was only 9.71, whereas DBC clocked in twice as much at 18.53. Your maximum drawdown or your peak to trough loss with Calm would have been only 12.07%, whereas DBC lost 31%, GSG lost 48%. And that's because during these risk-off events, Calm was actually able to go to cash and avoid that until the trend turned positive again. So overall, much better sharp ratio, 0.65 versus the next highest one was USCF at 0.54. And finally, when we look at the diversification potential of a commodity ETF, I like to measure by how correlated it is to the market. Ideally, we want a low to zero correlation. And historically, Com had the lowest one at 0.29, whereas the other three ETFs went from 0.4 to 0.48. So... In terms of it's zigging when your portfolio is zagging, Calm takes the win for me. And that's why it's my wildcard winner. Mike, you're up next. What is your mystery battle category and which of these ETFs wins it? So I'm going to go off topic a little bit and just talk about taxes. Um, and we know we're a little less than a month away or a month past uh, everybody writing a check or getting a check for, for doing your taxes. And one of the things that goes you got to think about when you're investing in these commodity ETFs is do they issue a K-1 or not? Um, and it's, it's not that big of a deal if you're trading it and you're in a sophisticated portfolio and you're used to doing these things. But if you're uh, a normal investor and you're investing in some of these strategies, you, there are some of them that will issue a K1 at the end of the year because of their structure. K1s are pain to deal with. They're not hard. 
Um, they're not expensive, but they're a pain. Sometimes they come late, sometimes they get reissued and they can cause the whole um, train wreck, which I like to refer to as taxes in the first place, um, make it that much more difficult. And of these three strategies, two of them, issue K1s, DBC and GSG. They're older. They don't follow some of the newer um, structures where you can get around um, issuing a K1, whereas SDCI is a um, K1 free product. Um, and just on that standpoint alone, a hands down winner in my mystery category is SDCI. There are others out there that don't issue K1s as well, but of these three, it's the only one. And if you don't wanna get that little piece of paper in the mail, and have to deal with um, figuring out how to put that into your TurboTax or send it to your tax accountant, I strongly suggest you get one with a no K1 wrapper and SDCI is that in this battle, in this battle matchup. Thank you so much, Mike, for blindsiding us with that wonderful point that, uh, that probably gets overlooked more than it should. Great points. So we've gotten to the part of the show or arrived where our judges can give us their final overall winner. How will this battle go down? I have no idea. Mike, give us your overall winner. My overall winner is SDCI for um, first and foremost because of um, the exposure strategy concept of how they can manage it. Uh, second, because performance has done extremely well relative um, to not only these other two products, but to the category as a whole. And then third, um, my wild card on taxes. So it's just a winner kind of across the board on that front. Um, if I was going to put a wild card out there, if you're looking for something um, that track is that DBC does have a uh, a sister product that tracks the exact same index or performance or spot on that has a no K1 wrapper and that's PDBC. And that's actually the, the king of the category. It's over a $5 billion strategy um, with our client base. It's one of the most popular holdings, but um, for this category and really in general, I really like SDCI. Um, as you pointed out earlier, Ron, when we were talking, it hasn't gotten the traction that I think it deserves. Um, and I think it's a it's a good one to point out in this strategy. And it's my overall winner um, from United States Commodity Funds, SDCI. Tony, your final chance to weigh in with your overall winner. Give it to us. I always come at this from a risk management perspective, especially in a uh, sector as volatile as commodities. Uh, so calm, uh, you'd be pleased to know that it does not generate a K1. It's a 40 act fund, so you don't have to deal with that pesky form. But uh, knowing that commodities are very cyclical and returns can come sporadically, that is they melt up or melt down. Uh, that individual commodity subsectors tend to perform dissimilarly in different environments, and that significant drawdowns can be very hard to dig yourself out of. I love the approach that Com has to be able to go long or flat on individual commodities and not the entire portfolio. So it doesn't have to risk off entirely if gold is in a prolonged downtrend. It simply takes its position in gold out based on an objective, predetermined market signal and puts it in cash. And like I mentioned earlier, in this environment where cash is yielding 5% risk-free, that is a positive carry that gives Calm a big hurdle over some of the other ETFs. Um, I do like PDBC. It's great. It does the same thing as DBC, and it's like a juggernaut in this realm. But I, I've never been in the field of maximizing my total returns. I like risk-adjusted returns. I know, very boring. So uh, for me, it goes to Calm. Well, our judges have spoken, and man, what analysis they gave us today. According to my final battle scorecard, today's winner is a split decision between SDCI from USCF Investments and COM from Direction. And I got to say, I didn't see that wild card coming. Um, actually, several wild cards coming. We had PB, PDBC as well as COM, but COM was the one that got Tony's uh, vote due to its lower volatility since 2018. Also, he likes that tactical approach of being able to be long or flat individual commodities, which has, has certainly uh, seemed to work. And then um, also uh, the fact that it's an Act of 40 fund makes its tax, tax situation and tax reporting a little bit more easier compared to some of the other ETFs in today's contest. SDCI got Mike's vote. He likes that active management. Um, that has certainly made a difference when it comes to managing that contango, which can produce a negative roll yield. And that uh, certainly has helped when you have some active management, being able to step in and deal with that. And then, of course, Mike's other point with the K-1 free um, tax reporting, simplif simplified SDCI has it. And uh, that was enough to get uh, his vote. Great, great job to both of our judges breaking down today's 
uh, awesome contest and a timely contest too with commodity prices staying stubbornly high and pushing higher with inflation. Well done. Uh, couldn't have done it without you guys. Thanks, Ron. Good to see you, Tony. That was a great time. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Ron. Be sure to visit the description section below. We've got links to both of our judges. Get in touch. We've also got a link to our program sponsor direction. So uh, again, check that out. So what ETF matchups would you like to see on our next episode? Toss us your ETF ticker symbols in the comment section below or on our X feed at ETF Guide. I'm Ron Deleggi. Thanks for watching ETF Battles. We'll see you on the next show.